All right, guys, we are back out here on the 800 watt turbine, and today we have to make a plate for it. So we're going to be mounting a flange, making a flange for it. Uh, the first step is to drill out a hole about an inch for the wires to come through and then make our holes for our bolt pattern and this will mount on a piece of two inch schedule 40. So that is our first step. Here's all the parts for it. There's its hub, very well built. And here is the eight gauge wire that's going to be running. We're going to solder and shrink tape onto the ends, but there's all our parts laid out. We're gonna get this piece of pipe in here in just a few minutes and start out with uh, making this flange. Now, if you wanna look below the video, I'll put this. You can actually buy these from eBay, these flanges, and their price is roughly affordable. You get two or three of them for about the price of buying just the flange. So if you wanna buy just the flange and make it yourself, you can. If you don't have those abilities, look below. I'll also put the link to the flanges. I'm back over here on the diagram. Kira is working on finishing up the holes for the flange we're making. And there's a reason. If you look up here in the top corner, about right there, I'll put a link to the first video about this whole setup. You're, I'm sure you will see this somewhere. And I was explaining about the pipe, the flange, and where you'd put guy wires or some type of a structural support. And we're going to get to that point. Right now, we're cutting a piece of pipe. and you have to go below the tip of your blades and get it hooked up at least three strands at three different points or four. And you're gonna use something like quarter inch. You wanna make sure that you've supported this. Now, if it goes up on the roof of a building, you can actually use rigid materials to do that. And you can weld little tabs on your pipe. Make sure working with galvanized, you're gonna stay clear of any kind of gases, get a fan running on it. So as she gets set up for the next one, um, we've got it drilled. And we marked it using clamping it on here and centering it and spraying some paint through the holes uh, to center it up. Paint. Yeah. Works great. Oh, and guys, pardon the noise. Hold on here just a second. Um, I want to show y'all something here. You see these little things here you can get at Harbor Freight. They got a little handle on them. Yeah, They're a little good. magnet. This is Kara's, correct? Uh-huh. And she uses this. I, I just came back in the shop and I'm like, you're clean. And she's like, yeah, look. She takes it and picks up and gets and gets all of her stuff. And even if it hits the bit, it don't really hurt it. And look at this. This is just, it just cracked me up here. I've been a hillbilly all these years. My, my daughter just done this. So watch, you pull the handle and it drops all the pieces off of it. It's plastic and it wipes up. So when she sprays oil on it, go ahead and finish your drilling. Um, when she sprays oil on it, the uh, end result, boom. All right, so as she finishes drilling, you'll notice she's blowing a little bit, blowing air towards the, uh, the oil smoke to keep it from getting near her. Of course, we do have an exhaust fan, but so far so good. We've got these three. And when you drill these, you want to step your holes up. Start out with a uh, 3 16th, go to a, a 5 16th, and just keep moving up until you get the hole you want size-wise. Make sure your bolts fit. And I'll drill these just a little bigger so I have something to work with. And there now Daniel is learning the trick. <laughs> Damn kids will teach you things. All right, so back over on this. We're getting this ready for this. And we're going to be using, and I'll put a... Uh, um, link down there too this is actually the easiest way to do it a 50 footer cut it full at full length measure it and cut it into three pieces and that gets me my drops now let's get the rest of this going kids are finishing drilling that up it's not that dad's lazy it's that i got other stuff to do so here we go let's continue all right guys as she is finishing up you can see what she's doing over here she's staging them each one bigger than the next. You want to get you a silver and dimming kit or something like that. And these plates here, let me show you here. You see that? That's a water jet cutout. You get these cheap. If you can actually call a local mill, they you, they normally have these. All right, like a four portal or something. Daniel's over here putting together the blades. And the way that they go together is you have the main hub, you have the assembly plate, and do not tighten these. Do not get them tight. 
you're going to have them set up to where they're just hand tight threaded down they'll go with the lock washer the washer the plate and you want to leave these loose because you're going to go out here and you're going to make a mark and you can take a framing square and put it on the edge so that you can get an exact mark spacing like say an inch and then you're going to measure from that point to that point the same to this point and you're going to make sure because these have a little bit of movement you can work with and then when you get them all centered say the same measurement and we're going to show you that here in just a second then you can run those in tighten them up and it'll be good so look at how big those blades are compared to daniel and that shop back sitting there they're not small all right let's get that done and we're going to set that up for the measurements it's how you balance them all right now we have the hub finished she has drilled it all out and like i was showing you in the beginning there this is a water jet cutout hub you can get them um, I, I get like three of these at a time for 29 dollars free delivery they're just a waste product um, you can get them in different sizes, 3 inch, 4 inch, 6 inch. I, I, I even get them up to 15 inch. And they typically come out of the shipyards and places like that. Um, what you're going to do with it is you're going to put it on a vise and you want to make sure you're just above the edge right there. And what I did is I took my grinder and made a tiny little flat spots on both sides. But you want to get it on there and make sure it's perfectly level. Over here, perfectly level. So... That way, the piece of pipe that I've got was cut with a pipe cutter, a tubing cutter, pipe cutter, right there. And when I'm done with it, I'll just clean the galvanize off, and I can stand it up, and I will also, again, check it for level and spot weld it on. So the end result is going to be a perfectly level pipe. Now, you want that because if it's off at all, if it's off, it's going to end up causing the tail to just swing around and follow gravity you don't want that you want it to be perfectly plumb the pipe on there so that the tail is easily gathered by the wind and put in line now over here we have the blades set up daniel has put them together and kira is helping him right now so they've marked out these kids have done this a bunch of times and they marked out at one inch on a square so you have one inch on a square, and they mark that out, look right down there, and put a little tip with a marker. So each blade has this little tip on it at the same location using the same square. You want to be very accurate. So you look over here. There's another one right there. Now, the reason we do this is because the blades, the blades have a little bit of give. The hole has to be big enough for the bolt, and when they drill it, They'll, they'll tell you that you've got to do this to center your blades. And if you put up a set of blades and they're just wobbling and you're like, man, they sold me junk. No, they didn't. They sold you something you need to learn how to operate. You need to learn how to properly assemble. And what they sold you was a turbine kit. They didn't sell you a finished Cadillac. And even when you get a finished Cadillac, I hate to mention it, it's about 85% Chinese parts and you got to take it back to a dealer a bunch of times. Same thing in everything. You need to know something. So I'm teaching you how to balance the blades. Now what we're going to do is they're going to take their tape measure and we got to get Emma out of here. They're going to take their tape measure and they're going to go to the one inch point right there on the line, matching it with this marker right here. So she'll hold that exactly on that dot. And then over here with Daniel, he will do the same thing on the same side of the tape measure. And he will end up with 57 and 5 eighths. All right. So we will write down on my concrete 57 and 5 eighths. And I'll laugh at it. All right. So they'll now move over here to the other side and repeat this process. She's going to go over here to this side of the blade. She's going to set hers at one and, and make sure you guys don't bump your blades because when he put the bolts in, he put them in to where they're a little more than hand tight so you can still kind of kick that blade around. And right there, she holds it on exactly one on the dot itself. Make sure you get it on the dot. And then over here, he comes up over here with 58 and a quarter. Now you look at that big difference. 
Now, is that because there's a default in the blade? No, it's made to do that. You have to adjust these. That's why there's three bolts. And even when there's two bolts, like this kind, even then, even with that pocket, you need to check the spacing between your tips. Because that distance, that half of an inch distance, a little over half, will cause this side here to be heavier than that. And you got to fix that. So where are we at? 58 and what? 58 and, 58 and a quarter. So 58 and a quarter there, 57 and 5 eighths there. Now y'all come over here and do this one. I don't want to have to make a long video, but I know people are, because there's always people going to bitch. They always want to push button everything. Coddled society we live in. All right, so now we have one inch there. And then over here, he has got 57 and a quarter. So 57 and a quarter. And you can do a piece of paper on the floor, you know, that's fine too. But, so what is this telling us? This is telling us that that gap is too far. That one is closer to a means average. And this one here is way far under. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'll have Daniel hold the phone here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the blade and give him a slight pull. You see that right there? I want to show you this. Look at this carefully right here. See that bolt? It allows a little movement. And then I'm going to take it like that. Now, they give you the. this company gives you this big plate. All them other companies just give you the freaking bolts and a washer. And no lock washers that are real. This is all stainless, too. So you're going to work that in just a little bit. So we know the gap here is 57 and a quarter. So we want to take that one. That one was good. We want to actually close this, this one up a little. See that how it moves? So we're going to close that up a little bit. And then we will remeasure until we get these points the same all the way around. So you'll work it back and forth, and then you'll slowly tighten that outer one down. You're going to tighten this one down. And then make sure everything's good. And then you'll tighten one here, here, and here. Check it again. And then tighten the last ones. And then you want to put uh, 35 pounds of uh, torque on these. And then you're good. Now, the blades can be a gram or so off in their casting. Don't freak out. It only runs about 1,200 RPMs before it, you know, that's its maximum power. However, the way to make sure they're balanced is what I'm showing you right here. So pay attention to getting these equal distance to each other, all right? The second thing is, we're going to paint this baby. Yeah, purple rain, man. All right, guys, let's get on this next one. Okay, now what we're doing is we're getting the pipe spotted onto the flange. And it's going to be a little bit messy because I just did a burying spot in three places. But this right here, that INE, um, I usually put that in the link below the video to where to get it, is the only thing I would trust to do what I'm going to do right now. Now, I've set it up with the level. Everything is level, spotted, checked, everything. We're perfect. We're going to weld this up, then we're going to put it on the wind turbine. And you're going to get to see what the wind turbine looks like because, uh, oh boy, we changed a few things. Purple rain, man. All right, now, back in the shop, we are finished with the build on this turbine. We, instead of using the, what we thought was 8-gauge, I actually put a micrometer on it, and here's the 8-gauge we were going to use, and this is a comparison to what's down there now. It is much smaller. Um, the wire is actually, I guess you'd say the Chinese rating of 7-gauge, so we went ahead and moved it up to 6 because... This thing is going to put out a lot of power, and in the history of buying this product from these people, it's it's they they output a lot. So how do you like the outcome of this? How do you like this purple rain? This is uh, I guess uh, Daniel named it purple rain. It's going to come out pretty cool with its looks. We have the tail. We have the little um, American flag on there. Uh, yes, it's made in China. Stop your bitching. If you wanted to make one, buy a factory. Um, but there it is. It's a good quality build. So far, I've had excellent luck with this brand, this style. 
They're rated exactly as claimed. In fact, they do produce more than claimed. And the blade quality, I've noticed, is very good, very solid, very rigid with just enough curved flex in them to handle the winds. So we are not expecting any problems. There it is. Total weld up. And I really got in there deep, buried that weld in, and preheated it with a torch like you should when you're messing with something that's half inch. So, yeah, with a MIG, you can do it. Heat it up. So there you go. Not a bad looking turbine. We're going to get that on the roof, guys. Y'all come back and see that video. And I hope the uh, information on how to lay these blades out to get them balanced is going to help you. That was the main goal of this video, other than putting some purple rain in the sky. Y'all be good. Thank you.